my uh, research question uh, was how to um, practice um, uh, concentrated. My research was about the fact that I didn't understand that at one moment I was on stage and I really enjoyed it and the other moment I absolutely hated it because of the stress and all the, the feelings you had, you know, being on stage, everybody's listening at you, looking at you. And um, I wanted to find out how and why that was and how I could like change that. So that was basically my research. Now, let's start with you, uh, Gerrit. Yes. What was the, can you remember how you defined your research in the beginning? How you defined? Yeah, with your definition of your, your research question. No, yeah, well, I, uh, I knew from the beginning I wanted to do something uh, yeah, really connected with my violin. And um, also something I, I could, uh, I could uh, be uh, uh, together with my instrument by practicing. And I, uh, I knew already I, uh, my concentration was not the best. And, uh, and I really wanted to do something um, to, uh, uh, to get the level of concentration higher. So, I, I had a few research questions and uh, yeah, I had a few lessons to narrow down this question. But, uh, it's just more or less okay. Easy. Now the first thing that I thought when I heard this was obviously his challenges is not high enough. I'm someone who has researched the phenomenon of flow in America and here that's what I really bring. You could call my research also flow on stage, the art of sustainable performance. But I thought, you know, the definition of flow is one of the definitions of being having an above average challenge that you can meet with above average skills. You need to be in that in that space where the challenge uh, gives you a certain sense of arousal and when it meets you can be in that heightened state of attention where things really start to happen. So practice that's ideal of course. Yeah. So your and challenge wasn't high enough. Yes, so now actually the point was I, I had this for a while that I could practice eight hours a day and I uh, I really enjoyed it and I could not stop uh, practicing anymore. And then uh, this feeling somehow went away. And, um, and this was after my bachelor uh, that I entered the master and uh, the, the motivation was a little bit gone. And together with the motivation, also my concentration was gone. So, um, so that, that's, that's, uh, that was the moment that I entered your class, I, I remember. And then, then you told me this, this period of uh, practicing eight hours a day, this was uh, a flow, so to speak. And, um, and uh, we were trying to get back to this uh, to this point, which is called the flow. And we uh, need that you that you practice without thinking. Okay, now I need to practice. And now I need to focus. And now I need to be concentrated because this is only dragging you away from the fact to be focused. To be. Yeah, there was another another myth was the about it's not about the amount of time that you spent practicing, but the quality of the time that you spent practicing. The intensity is much more important than the time. What did you do? Um, I started to analyze, in a way, uh, uh, how I was practicing and what were the thoughts in my head which were disturbing me, or, or, or what were the things that were distracting me. So, I, um, uh, first of all, I started to record my, myself. Uh, if, you, if you record yourself, you, you are aware of the fact that you need to perform. You know, you're not just there and, and what you did, it doesn't matter anymore, but now you have something, you know, something concrete that you can listen back to. And uh, yeah, this was uh, this made made the first change. You know that you were more aware of practicing, so being more in the moment. Some other things we did with uh, Gerrit was to disturb him, to get him out of his habit. So we had him lying on the floor playing the violin. We had him upside down. We had him done with Conny de Jong. We had him done tango with an unbelievable splashing beautiful woman and he had to play <laughs> he has still had to play the, the violin and he did but it somehow shook you out of your oh, yeah. your habits you remember that? yeah I remember <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't take off he remembers uh, uh, but hold it for that now Jan Jan what, how did you define your your remember what your definition was your like the actual yeah your research question how you designed it well, to be honest, at first, I, when I heard about the fact that we had to do this artistic research, I felt like, why? It's a waste of time, I need to practice, and why should I bother doing this? So then, when I actually knew that... Not motivated. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so when I like, really accepted the fact that I had to do it, um, I needed to find something that would like, really help me with my violin. So it was like a thing that I could use in the practice, for real. So that's how I came up with that fact, and it was what I just said. I didn't understand why 
on some moment I didn't have any problems being on stage and I enjoyed it. I could play like completely free with no no strange thoughts in my mind and the, like let's say the day but your, my was question was what was your research question Jan? yeah I cannot remember my research question well I'll help you out the first thing that Jan said at least was I my research question is that I do not want to be like that on stage I'm just saying it it was like uh, uh, formulated in the negative sense which is uh, if you are you know I'm from the background of mental sports and uh, preparation you never want to define something in a negative sense because it's like I don't want you to think about the pink elephant. Okay? You do not think about the pink elephant. The pink elephant gets bigger and bigger. Okay? So he was as part of his motivation problem. So he's defining something and he's really not being careful about what the intensity is and what he's really calling. Uh, I, the, the thing that I noticed about John when he was playing that I couldn't see him. There was a, he was almost mechanistic when he stood there with his violin. So I asked him the question, what would you rather have done if you hadn't played violin? And what did you say, huh? Playing football. Playing football. <laughs> Playing soccer. <coughs> and I asked him, why? Are you good? Are you, are you any good? You know? And then he told me, he was uh, selected uh, in the new selection of uh, SA Den Haag, which is one of the big teams in the, in the area here, and he was, a, he was a little star playing out there on the streets, and uh, probably his mother said to him, no, you're going to do something serious, you're going to play violin. Well, so she told me to, to choose, it's either the violin or football, and so I chose the violin, I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> still awesome. Oh. But I had him stand up in my office, I remember that, and I put a bunch of pigs together like, like a soccer ball. I had him stand up, stand up, you know. And I passed him the ball and I put the waste basket and the chair and that's the goal when I passed him the ball. And he turned around and kicked that paper ball straight into the goal. And I thought, that's, that's impossible. It's a lucky shot. I did it again. And again, he was so fast. And so he was on his feet. And I asked him, you know, why don't you play the violin the way you play soccer? <laughs> because he was grounded, he was completely there, he looked alert, and something you couldn't see when he was playing the violin. And then I think you started working with Conidion, yeah. and did some ways to disturb you, yeah. and uh, something in him came alive, uh, which uh, we hadn't seen before when he was playing the violin. And uh, I think then his, his research began to take shape because you were behind it, you were in it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Anything else you know, that happened with you in those, that period? Um, well, tell them? like what you just said, the fact about playing football and the combination with playing the violin, I started realizing the fact how I should stand. Like, um, I, I, I had a, uh, a thing on standing like on one leg instead of on two, and to like bend my knees a little bit more and to really focus on that, be aware of the fact how you stand, it's very important because then you are like, like stable and if your body is stable, I think your mind has a better chance to be stable as well. So I think that was one of the most important things I've learned. Because you just told me on stage you feel more? Comfortable, yeah, more at ease, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm more aware. The, another thing that was very important thing I found out is mindlessness. Like that you eat something and you're really, really enjoying the fact that you're going to eat something and you, you eat it and then it's gone and you didn't taste anything of that. That was also some eye-opener I had. Yeah. Stepping into the quality of your own experience. Exactly. Yeah. That's really critical. Part. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I'm going to finish up because time is up. What I think for all of you, and that's very young, they, by the way, did a fantastic uh, final exam. They touched us. They were playing. Some of the people, I never told them, said, are oh, the average players. They were phenomenal players when they did their final exam. So it was really wonderful to hear, to see and listen to. But the thing is that uh, if you do your research, make sure that it has something to do with yourself. And that, uh, of course, we all want to benefit from your own experience, because that's why you're here. But uh, make sure that it touches you when you do it, and make sure that your your question, how your thought is sharp, is focused, and is linked to who you are. Then, you know, the chances that you will 
enjoy this uh, this uh, this one year or <coughs> one year isn't it? This one year here very much, and it's not you know a mental exercise of doing a, a master something. This is important stuff to do. Uh, that's it. So I wish you all uh, good luck with it. Thanks. Sir. Thank you.